Dubai, the most luxurious place in the world. Just 50 years ago, Dubai was merely a small town in the middle of the desert. Today, Dubai serves as the luxurious face of the Middle East and the biggest attraction that part of the world has to offer. Undoubtedly, you've seen photos of the Burj Al Arab Hotel, the crescent-shaped skyscraper built on a man-made island. You also probably know that Dubai is home to the world's tallest building, and you might have even seen Tom Cruise scaling it in an installment of the Mission Impossible franchise. That building is called the Burj Khalifa, and it stands 2,722 feet high. Yes, I'm sure you know a bit about the attractions of this amazing city, but today I'd love to get the chance to tell you so much more. So, here's all the over-the-top, wildly expensive things you can find in Dubai. But first, a tiny history lesson. How did Dubai go from being just a small desert town to the extravagant oasis it is today? The same way all of the other United Arab Emirate cities became so rich. Oil. Abu Dhabi, just 90 miles from Dubai, is the richest city in the world, and it sits on 10% of the entire world's oil supply. This production of oil launched the United Arab Emirates into the first world. Millions were poured into Dubai, and it became one of the biggest cities in the Middle East. However, today, Dubai only makes 5% of its revenue from oil, because its reserves aren't nearly as lucrative as some of its UAE neighbors. Dubai makes the majority of its revenue from trade, real estate, and tourism. Dubai has become the business center of the UAE since it can no longer rely on oil production alone. But this adjustment has not discouraged this incredibly rich city from growing. Dubai is growing in population just as much as it's growing vertically. In fact, about one-fourth of all cranes are located in Dubai. That's right, about 25% of cranes in existence are in just one UAE city. It seems the game plan of Dubai is just to keep building skyscrapers. Two of these skyscrapers are the aforementioned Burj Khalifa and the Burj Al Arab Hotel. The Burj Khalifa stands more than a half a mile tall. It's so tall, in fact, that at its upper floors, the building can sway several feet at the mercy of the wind. This, however, was not overlooked by the architects of this massive building. The Burj Khalifa was designed in such a way that the sway would be too slow for the vestibular system in the inner ear to even notice. That's the part of the ear that provides balance if you happen to be unburdened by interference. The Burj Al Arab is a beautiful five-star hotel, just hundreds of feet off the land. The Al Arab is the fifth largest hotel in the world, thanks to its unique shape. The hotel stands 56 stories high. It is officially labeled as a five-star hotel, but some have dubbed this stunning building with the highest remark of seven stars. This seven-star label is up for debate as the authority on the matter of luxury hotels has not been agreed upon. But seven-star or not, this hotel is truly magnificent. If you want to spend a night in the royal suite at the Al Arab, it'll cost you just over $24,000. The interior of the Burj Al Arab is adorned with around 1,790 square meters of 24-karat gold leaf. But even that can touch the glorious views of the immaculate city and the picture-perfect gulf. Along with extremely tall buildings, the city is keen on building man-made islands. Both the Palm Islands and the World Islands are two incredibly ambitious projects that came to fruition with the help of a whole lot of cash. The construction of the Palm Islands not only cost $12 billion to build, but it also required 94 million cubic meters of sand. To put that into perspective, 94 million cubic meters of sand could fill the entire Empire State Building two and a half times. The world islands, as in the man-made islands that mimic the shape of the world's land masses, took 321 million cubic meters of sand. Theodore, if you could just edit in nine Empire State Buildings which also adds another $15 billion to the cost of man-made islands in Dubai. 
I'm not much of a big fan of sand in the first place, as it's rough, coarse, and it gets everywhere. Nevertheless, I did enjoy my time at the Palm Island. Like I've always said, nothing exfoliates quite like the warm water of the Persian Gulf. But that's enough talk about man-made islands, huh? Let's move on to the police force. Now, law enforcement isn't usually something that comes to mind when speaking in terms of luxury. But it sure is in Dubai. As a means of wooing the tourists, Dubai's police force uses supercars as their patrol vehicles. This includes cars such as the Ferrari FF that goes for around half a million dollars, the Lamborghini Aventador that goes for around $400,000, and my personal favorite, an Aston Martin 177 for the reasonable price of $1.79 million. Trust me when I say this, nothing makes a man feel more like James Bond than flooring an Aston Martin 177. Ooh, makes me want to take mine out for a spin right now. Anyway, using these spectacular cars is just Dubai being Dubai. But hey, Dubai is the eighth safest city in the world, so more power to them. This isn't all due to the supercars, of course. The UAE, in general, has rather strict laws due to the Islamic constitutional monarchies that operate the Emirates government. Some Sharia laws exist in Dubai as well, so if you're on vacation with your missus, checking out the bougie police force, make sure the two of you don't get caught smooching because it might just get you deported. However, due to the extremely high amount of tourism, some places in Dubai are much more lenient. The serving of alcohol, for instance, would not be permitted in a traditional Middle Eastern setting but it is in Dubai, in specific institutions such as hotels and clubs. It is actually estimated that around 15% of Dubai's population are Emiratis, while the other 85% are from out of town. About half of the population is composed of the workers building hundreds of skyscrapers, which does make a little bit of sense considering the whole crane situation. Most of these workers are from India, Pakistan and Bangladesh. Which brings us to the more unfortunate side of Dubai. The class divide is quite big. Many of the immigrant workers live and work in less than ideal conditions, while Emiratis and the upper class foreigners earn extremely attractive salaries. There really isn't much of a middle ground between the class divide and Dubai. But just like any country divided, there's always a sport to bring the people together. Well, that's the idea anyway. And in this case, this sport is camel racing. It's a bit of a sore subject for me, considering back in 96 I lost about 500,000 in a camel race to some sheik in Sharjah. But that was a different time. Camel racing in Dubai is almost equivalent to American football in the US. And Dubai's twist on the sport is that instead of children jockeys, they've began to use robots. You see, camel racing has a bit of a dark past. It used to be the case that small children would be forced to ride the camels, and that led to human trafficking. In less progressed areas in the Middle East, it still happens. But in Dubai, the children have been replaced with robots. And believe it or not, some of these little bots can cost up to $10,000. The camel that lost me that 500 grand was steered by a monkey. Now let's just move on from camel racing. In the future, Dubai has some rather insane plans.